sector. President Cyril Ramaphosa says government will rework regulatory frameworks around the production and the cannabis and hemp products to grow the sector. President Ramaphosa was delivering the State of the Nation address on Thursday. He says processes will be streamlined so that the sector can thrive and create more jobs. For more on that, we're now joined by Sposi Sotkaba, the CEO of the African Cannabis Advisory Group. But before we speak to him, let's now listen to what the president said. We will review the policy and regulatory framework for a whole number of other processes, but more importantly, which will come as uh, sweet news for our people in the Eastern Cape and KwaZulu-Natal for industrial hemp and cannabis to realize huge potential for investment and job creation. There we have it. The president uh, uh, said that uh, in his State of the Nation address last night that uh, hemp and cannabis production can create 130,000 new jobs. So, Spusiso, a very good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, first of all, uh, what's your reaction to his proclamation that government will fast-track regulations for the cannabis industry in South Africa? Good evening, Simpiwe. Thank you so much for having me on uh, today and uh, a good evening to the viewers as well. So I think this uh, proclamation is certainly one that is received with uh, great excitement uh, by not only the, um, uh, the current private sector cannabis operators, but also, um, as he touched on, uh, many rural and indigenous, indigenous communities uh, that have been working and earning an income from the cultivation and sale of cannabis uh, for decades. Um, and so as we sort of assess the country's uh, economic and social uh, situation, this is certainly a sector that can uh, really put a dent on uh, unemployment uh, and truly create long-term sustainable opportunities for um, a broad range of South African stakeholders. Well, the president said industrial hemp and cannabis will realize huge potential for investment and job creation. So what's your understanding then of the punted regulation with regards to small scale farmers or individual merchants who may not necessarily trading on an industrial scale? Sure. So at present, uh, the, the legislative and regulatory framework for uh, cannabis is really geared towards um, more medical cannabis in South Africa. Um, so currently around 50 licenses uh, have been issued uh, to date uh, and these operations require significant, amount, significant amounts of capital to, uh, to really operate. You're talking at a minimum 5 million but on average around 20 million um, and you even have projects that go all the way up to 400 million. Um, however, the government has been taking a, a phased approach in uh, introducing uh, legislation into the industry and we do expect um, some framework that uh, does allow for um, indigenous growers, smallhold farmers, uh, traditional cannabis using communities to also be able to be integrated into this formal uh, framework under, under which we uh, are trying to, to set up. Well, are there any open channels for the facilitation of the development of the appropriate market support infrastructure, like what, processing plants and storage facilities, perhaps? Sure. So there are currently um, a broad range of uh, in infrastructure um, uh, initiatives that, are, that have been completed and are in the process of being completed. However, South Africa is still a very significant uh, way away from having sufficient uh, infrastructure for this industry to thrive and succeed. Um, and that, to some degree, has been a function of the staggered um, approach under which um, cannabis has been uh, legalized uh, uh, in the country. And so we are of the view that once legislation and, and regulation is conducive, um, the investment community will begin to be confident to, to deploy capital into this industry, and that necessary infrastructure will be there uh, to help ensure that uh, the industry gets off uh, the ground. Well, cannabis has been shrouded in controversy for so many years and there's been much contestation around uh, the Cannabis for Private Purposes bill that does not go far enough uh, in addressing concerns around uh, children and secondhand smoke and the impact on road users. Are we seemingly and inadvertently shying away from these concerns? 
So I would um, uh, sort of uh, argue to to the contrary, particularly when you look at the feedback that's, that has been provided uh, by certain groups uh, around the Cannabis Master Plan, where these concerns have been raised, um, and I, I do believe that they are being taken up. Um, so ensuring, for example, that minors are protected um, in the way of being able to access cannabis or being in proximity of people uh, who consume uh, cannabis. Um, driving has also been a, a big dis discussion point in terms of ensuring that uh, people do not uh, drive uh, intoxicated in, in, in cannabis. Um, and so I think the engagement so far do seem to be quite balanced, um, you know, looking at the opportunities within the sector, but also looking to um, ensure that they are uh, protective uh, sort of mechanisms to, um, to, to make sure that this industry doesn't have any sort of uh, negative uh, impact. Is there any monitoring mechanism perhaps that uh, cannabis products or dacha or marijuana products are not sold to children or those under 18? Sure. So at present, the sale of high THC cannabis in South Africa uh, is actually not legal. Uh, and this can be a little bit confusing because uh, we know that in 2018, the Constitutional Court ruled that the growing and consumption of cannabis within a private space by an adult is legal. Um, but the the um, the um, the commercial sale of cannabis is still not legal within this country unless you are a licensed producer. And even then, if you if you are a licensed producer at present, the framework allows actually for, for export only. So the sale of um, uh, THC uh, products um, with THC being the element in, con in, in cannabis that can get you high uh, is actually all done uh, illegally or under not under any legal framework. Um, so the hope is that as South Africa introduces uh, medical, uh, large-scale domestic medical cannabis programs, uh, that these um, these protective mechanisms are put in place to ensure that minors are, are, are not able to access uh, cannabis, except those who need it for medicinal uh, reasons, because they, there is quite a, a large contingent of, of children who actually do need um, um, cannabis uh, for medicinal uh, purposes, especially those suffering from epilepsy and so forth. Um, so we are still to get to that point, but uh, you know we do hope that uh, enough uh, protective measures are, are put in place. Yeah, and uh, speaking of uh, protective measures, will they extend to protecting those uh, who claim to be you know, in possession of cannabis or hemp or any other marijuana products for medicinal pr purposes without any proof, of course? Sure. So the, um, the regulator, um, SAPRA, uh, is yet to introduce a formal, um, uh, you know, sort of a medical cannabis card or a means of uh, sort of indicating that someone is in possession of cannabis for medical uh, purposes. Um, however, under the proposed um, cannabis for private purposes bill, um, individuals are allowed to have small amounts of cannabis on them um, for whatever reason that is, whether it's recreational or, or, or medical. Um, and so we, we do have sort of a we are actually quite early in, in the development of, of these frameworks uh, in South Africa, and we do hope that this year we begin to see uh, some of these uh, get in, uh, some of these uh, um, sort of frameworks and, and protective measures come in, in, into place. But at this moment, um, it's it's uh, there's little to no legal high THC cannabis that uh, has been uh, distributed under uh, in South Africa, except under exceptional circumstances from SAPRA. All right, Spusiso, great chatting to you. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you, Simpiwe. All right, that was Spusiso Klaba, the CEO at the African Cannabis Advisory Group.